Language is beautiful, expressive, and full of life, but it's also kind of confusing. Phrases can mean things other than the literal words being used, and the same word can have different meanings just based on the words around it. All of these nuances becomes a problem for computers that only understands ones and zeros, which is why we need word embeddings. A word embedding is a way to convert language into meaningful numbers such that the nuances and complexity can be understood by a computer. Some of these embedding methods are better than others, and one of the milestones in this field of language understanding is called word to vec word to vec is an embedding method that uses millions, if not billions, of words to learn how to place them in a high-dimensional space, such that the arrangement of words encodes important relationships. word to vec isn't really one specific algorithm, though, and is more like a family of techniques for turning words into embeddings. So how do we teach a computer to create these embeddings? In 2013, researchers at Google published a paper called Efficient Estimation of Word Representations in a Vector Space, where they proposed two flavors for creating these embeddings, continuous bag of words and the skip gram model. In a nutshell, continuous bag of words looks at a collection of words called the context window where one of these words are missing. The missing word is called the target. The model then plays a game of fill in the blank with itself, attempting to predict the target word based on the surrounding context. At first, the model isn't very good at guessing, and it makes a lot of mistakes. So it phones a friend and asks it to tell it how close or far it was from the correct answer. This friend is called the loss function. The loss function spits out a value that tells the model how good or bad the prediction was, and the closer this value is to zero, the better the prediction. Using this value, the model can trace back its steps and figure out which parts of the model contributed most to the mistake and adjust these connections to make better predictions in the future. This process is called backpropagation. Skipgram, on the other hand, does the exact opposite by using a target word to predict words that usually appear around it. Using the same backpropagation algorithm, it learns how to accurately predict the context words from the input word. As a result, each word is represented as a point in a high dimensional space called the embedding space which has some very interesting and useful properties. Typically, being around 100 to 300 dimensions, the embedding space arranges the words such that the distances between them captures important relationships. One of these relationships is the similarity between words, where words used in similar context tend to cluster together. For example, if I type in the word pet, I get words like pooch, cats, animal, puppy, dogs, and so on. Or if I search for experiment, I get words like genetic manipulations, microgravity experiments, and so on. This property of the embedding space doesn't just stop at clustering words that are similar, and we can use some vector arithmetic to find some interesting analogies. In this context, an analogy is a way to find missing words by comparing the relationship between other words. It's like saying if king is related to queen, then what is a man related to? This classic example with words to vec shows how we can use math with word vectors to find what the missing word is. As described in this blog post, these linear analogies form a parallelogram in the vector space where one direction seems to encode information about royal status and another direction encodes information about gender. Actually performing the calculation with words to vec, the top words we get back are queen, monarch, and princess. Another example is taking the word sushi, subtracting Japan, and adding Italy to give us the word gourmet pizza. Something that's also pretty interesting here is how the results will change based on the capitalization of the words. Watch how this example changes with different types of capitalization. While all this talk of word analogies and similar words is cool and all, what is the word to vec actually used for? When you search for something in a search engine, your query is used to rank web pages that the engine deems most relevant. Using word to vec to convert your search into a vector helps the engine find relevant results using similar words, even if the exact search term isn't on the page. A problem that some recommendation engines deal with is called the code start problem. This is when the model struggles with new items that have little user interaction data. Word to vec can improve these recommendations by using the description of the product or its features rather than waiting for someone to purchase it. Because word to vec understands word relationships, it can improve translating between languages. It finds how words from different languages are used in similar contexts, making translation less direct and based more on the context of words. But with all great models comes its limitations. 
Although word to vec models understand the context much better than methods like tf-idf or other simpler methods, it still only creates one vector per word, and that vector doesn't change. While training, the vectors will shift, move, and change to find the best representation for a word. But once training is done, the representations are fixed, contributing to the model's lack of contextual understanding. Lastly, word to vec struggles with multi-word phrases, meaning things like New York might be treated as separate words using its unified meaning. Understanding these limitations is crucial for effectively applying word to vec and can help you recognize when it may be time to use a more advanced and dynamic technique to help you out with your language task.